Ian Chalmers. I was director of the National Perinatal Epidemiology Unit between 1978 and 1992. How did the MPU come to be established? There were two main things which led to the agreement to establish a National Perinatal Epidemiology Unit. Previously, beginning in 1946, there had been national perinatal surveys and it was suggested that there ought to be a research base for these repeated surveys. There had been three previously so the question was raised um, if there's going to be a fourth who should run it and a small group of obstetricians, paediatricians and epidemiologists had been meeting to discuss this the problem was that they hadn't been able to identify an individual who was interested in establishing and directing such uh, a unit. The other uh, matter was that a report on the child health services chaired by Professor Court in Newcastle showed that the decline in early mortality from stillbirths or neonatal deaths was slower in England and Wales than it was in some other European countries. So it was thought that maybe there were avoidable deaths happening and also that they may also be reflected in avoidable handicaps among surviving um, infants. So these, these two things came together and led the government to decide that they would establish a perinatal epidemiology unit to address these matters. What were your original ambitions for the NPU? Well, I was very fortunate in being asked to draw up an outline program of work for the perinatal, proposed perinatal epidemiology unit. Um, and in essence, obviously, to take account of um, the things that had led to the proposal it be established, but also to include other things which um, I was interested in. So to take the um, uh, first things first, there was the issue of unnecessary deaths and handicaps. And so one of the things as a basis for this was routine uh, analysis of routinely collected statistics, for which Alison McFarlane uh, was made responsible. She worked at the Office of Population Censuses and Surveys and I think she was the first person to join the unit, um, apart from me. The second concerned the um, possibility of a fourth National Perinatal Mortality Survey. Uh, Jean Golding was recruited to look into this and although the unit didn't go on to um, do such a survey, to oversee such a survey, Jean uh, moved to Bristol and set up the very successful cohort study called the ALSPAC study. That's very well known too. My interest as an ex-clinician, a former clinician, was in evaluating the effects of healthcare. And this meant that I was inevitably interested in trying to develop a program of randomized controlled trials in the perinatal field. Adrian Grant was appointed to the unit to develop that um, theme within the unit's work and he was joined not long afterwards by Diana Elborn uh, to develop what became um, an internationally recognized program of clinical trials for the unit. 
My particular interest was to try and find out what could be known from existing research without doing additional research. And so my interest um, evolved into um, systematic reviews, uh, ways of keeping them up to date and corrected if they needed correction. And that led to um, a theme of work uh, which was manifested in the publication uh, in the late 80s of a big two-volume book called um, Effective Care in Pregnancy and Childbirth and um, an electronic database, the Oxford Database of Perinatal Trials, um, where the reviews could be updated. And the important thing to say about all of these enterprises was that um, there was input not just from epidemiologists but also from um, health economists, from social scientists using both qualitative and uh, quantitative um, approaches to social science research, um, statisticians, um, computer specialists. It was a, a very happy multidisciplinary team. What do you think were the most important contributions that the MP made during your time as director? I think probably the first thing to emphasise um, is the contributions that were made because we were a multidisciplinary team and wouldn't have been made um, had that not been the case. It was also very important that we actually had users of the maternity services on our advisory um, committee. So th th that um, structure and the input from um, outsiders was very helpful in trying to make sure that um, all of the work that we did uh, was focused on trying to do right by people using the health services and those working in it. So I don't think I'm going to um, try and single out any among the things that I've already mentioned that deserves special uh, attention or credit. As the founding director, the decision to leave must have been a difficult one. How did you come about? Actually, it wasn't too difficult. Um, I and others had just produced this monstrous two-volume book um, of systematic reviews, Care During Pregnancy and Childbirth. Uh, a sequel volume for care, effective care of the newborn infant had been um, produced by Jack Sinclair and Mike Bracken and I was actually very keen to see whether the methods that we had used for those um, um, those efforts could be applied more widely throughout the health service and I felt very fortunate that Michael Peckham the director of research and development at the Department of Health at the time knew about my interest in this and encouraged me to send him a proposal to set up an initiative um, which would see whether the methods could be extended to other areas of healthcare and that uh, eventually led to the establishment of the Cochrane Collaboration. I'm very pleased to have been asked um, the questions that um, I've tried to answer talking about ancient history of the NPU. It's um, wonderful the way that it has developed and thrived um, over the last 40 years. And I wish everyone who works in it and the unit itself all the best in continuing to do work which you find fulfilling and which is useful to the families using the perinatal health services. Peter Brocklehurst and I was director of the MPU between 2002 and 2011. Peter, I know you originally came to the MPU 
when you were undertaking your MSc at the London School of Hygiene. How did this placement come about? So when I was training in obstetrics and gynaecology, you had to do a period of time outside obstetrics and gynaecology when you were an SHO. And I did some time in GE Medicine where I first met some epidemiologists. Uh, I enjoyed that a great deal and went back and did my research in GE Medicine, undertaking a randomised controlled trial of the management of recurrent genital herpes in pregnancy. Uh, while I was doing that, I was fully intending to go back to clinical obstetrics and gynaecology, but I was so um, interested in pursuing a career in epidemiology that I contacted Ian Chalmers and we arranged a meeting one evening at the Royal Society of Medicine, where he gave me, as Ian does, the most uh, directive counselling I've ever had. Uh, and after listening to me for about half an hour, I decided that I definitely needed to do a Master's in Epidemiology at the London School and uh, that I wouldn't forgive myself if I didn't do that. So I went off to the London School and um, once I'd finished a year as being a registrar in obstetrics and gynaecology at UCH and while I was at the school I was approached by Diana Elborn. Um, Adrian Grant who had run the trials unit within the uh, NPU was leaving to go to Aberdeen and uh, Diana approached me to ask whether I'd be interested as, uh, in being a, a research fellow within the trials unit for a year. So, of course, I immediately said yes. Uh, it was a fantastic opportunity. Uh, uh, and I came here completely overawed and intimidated by everybody who was here. By that time, Ian Chalmers had already left, um, but um, there were some very big names still here, and I came as a very junior uh, epidemiologist straight out of the school. What happened next? So I started here on a year's contract as a research fellow in clinical trials, um, which threw me rather in at the deep end. Um, we'd recently been awarded funding for a large uh, pan-European trial of TRH, uh, and some external evidence was published which questioned the need to finish the trial. So one of the first things I remember doing was helping Dana Elborn shut down the UK and European trial based on the external evidence which suggested no benefit. I was asked to stay on for a further year, which again I accepted. And during that year, there were discussions with the then director, Judith Lumley, about whether I'd be willing to stay on as a consultant epidemiologist with an open-ended contract within the unit. So I had to make the decision about whether to give up uh, training in obstetrics and gynaecology and concentrate purely on uh, perinatal epidemiology. Uh, and after thinking about it and discussing it with my partner quite a lot, I decided that I would do that, that I really enjoyed research, I enjoyed being at the NPU, uh, and I felt I could make a good contribution. So um, a post was advertised, I uh, applied and was interviewed and was appointed in 1996. So then I became a, a consultant epidemiologist. And interestingly, around about that time, medical training was changing, uh, Kalman, requirements came in and because I hadn't finished my training in obstetrics and gynaecology uh, but I was a consultant clinical epidemiologist uh, my name appeared on the specialist register as a consultant in public health. So I was a uh, de facto head of the clinical trials activity once Diana Elborn left and a consultant epidemiologist within the unit and then um, when the subsequent director Leslie Davidson left uh, the post of director was advertised and again I was uh, interviewed and appointed in 2002. What do you think were the most important contributions that the MPU made during your time as a director? Gosh, that's a difficult question. There were a lot. Um, I suppose some of the most um, media um, important uh, outputs were birthplace where we looked at the safety of planned place of birth of women planning to give birth at home in midwifery units and in hospital that certainly attracted a lot of attention and has been instrumental in changing policy around planned place of birth um, right through to the recent uh, maternity transformation program so that was a big splash for the NPU but we produced a lot of work during that time all of which has uh, has an important place 
I suppose the other two important initiatives were that when I was first appointed director there were a number of trials happening within um, what, was the pre, what was the precursor of a formal trials unit but the number of those trials increased quite dramatically while I was director partly because I was so very interested in trials and ran a lot of those trials so the trials activity increased a lot. Um, the other thing that started during my role as director uh, and has become a fantastic success is the UK Obstetric Surveillance System, UCOS, uh, run by Professor Marion Knight. Um, that started in about 2005 and has produced some amazingly important and uh, useful pieces of research. So if I, had to, if I had to isolate three, it would probably be birthplace, the impact on uh, the trials activity uh, and UCOS as being the biggest. What do you see as your most important personal successes during your time as director? So personal successes are quite difficult to separate from the activities of the unit when you're the director. Um, but one of the first things I was able to do, um, which was a coincidence of people moving, people retiring, was make a number of senior appointments. And I was extremely fortunate um, to make some fantastic appointments, including the current director, Jenny Karinchuk, um, but Ron Gray, Maggie Redshaw, Maria Quigley. Um, Marion Knight was also already in post within the NPU at that time. So, I was able to make some fantastic appointments and those staff make a unit such as this. You can't uh, have a successful epidemiology unit without really good solid researchers who have uh, brilliant ideas and can execute the studies really well. So that's probably most, my most fantastic contribution was to make some really great appointments. The second one probably was um, the successful bid for the policy research unit to the Department of Health. The MPU has been funded in some way or other by the Department of Health for 40 years. Um, that has changed over time in various formats um, and the new iteration as the policy research units put it in a different place. We often saw the Department of Health funding as the core funding for the unit. This separated it into something which was a specific set of deliverables relating to policy research. Uh, and this was the first time we'd bid for something quite of this nature. So it was a lot of work, it was hard work. We had to conceptually separate the policy relevant research out from the rest of the research that the unit did, where in the past that had been much more integrated, and pre present a coherent case to the Department of Health, which was successful. So that was, a, was personally a very satisfying experience. And then of course the third one which I've already referred to is probably Birthplace. So Birthplace was a huge collaborative uh, initiative uh, but I led it um, and it was an enormous piece of work done uh, as these things often are with uh, hugely inadequate funding uh, but produced a really important uh, result which has had a substantial impact in the UK and, and continues to have impacts uh, outside the UK. So that was personally very satisfy satisfying for me. I tend to think of myself and describe myself as a trialist, but that's the, probably one of the most impactful pieces of research I've done, which was of course an observational study. Being in the unit for so long, the decision to leave must have been a difficult one. How did this come about? I'd been in the NPU for 17 and a half years by the time I left and deciding to leave was a very difficult decision to make. I felt and still feel that the structure, the organisation of the NPU is a fantastic one. Bringing people with diverse disciplines together, clinicians, epidemiologists, statisticians, health economists, psychologists, social scientists, etc into a group allows you to have a fantastic generation of new ideas and, and execute those ideas and produce research which is widely relevant. I wanted to expand that into women's health more broadly. I trained in obstetrics and gynaecology and although my major interest was in obstetrics or pregnancy and the consequences of pregnancy, there were still aspects of women's health which I think which I felt were being neglected in the UK and internationally. And I thought the model that we'd got for the MPU could effectively be expanded into women's health more broadly. 
it would be fair to say there was no appetite for that happening within Oxford, uh, although I did try. Um, so when I was approached by UCL to be the director of the Institute for Women's Health, which brought together all aspects of women's health into one institute, it was a very attractive proposition. They'd taken it a step further than I was um, aspiring to, which is to bring together all aspects of research from very basic science, scientific research, right through to clinical research, epidemiology and policy research into a single institute across the whole of women's health. Um, so it was a very, very tempting offer and, um, and I decided to go uh, to see whether I could um, build the research capacity within that institute in a way that had wanted to do uh, but wasn't able to do in Oxford. I mean the one thing I will say about the MPU is that it's a fantastic place to work. Having worked in a variety of different places since leaving the MPU, it is a marvellous place to work. People work very collaboratively, people work very hard, they work together as a team. There is very little, if any, infighting. It is a wonderfully productive place because everybody works well together. And remember, this is an, uh, an organisation which is enormously impactful in the UK and around the world, where people talk about the MPU as being one of the leading uh, research organisations within maternity care. So it could easily attract lots of egos, lots of people who have their own personal agendas, but that has never been the case within the MPU, certainly not in my experience. People have been incredibly uh, collaborative and wanted to work together and pull together and you don't have people who won't take part in various meetings or, or committees that do uh, things which are important for being part of a university. Uh, they will contribute in all sorts of ways, not just their research expertise and brilliance. They will contribute as good citizens within the unit and within the university more broadly. So I can't, I can't stress how friendly a place it is to work in and um, how I missed that enormously when, once I left. And you take these things for granted, don't you? When things are going well uh, and everybody gets on well with each other, you take it for granted. I mean, making a decision to leave MPU was one of the most difficult decisions I've made in my career, but it, it, it is easier when you're confident that the people you're leaving behind are going to make a, a fantastic job of um, what you've left, as it were, that they are going to continue to develop and grow the organisation. And I was absolutely delighted when Jenny, who became the acting director after I left, was appointed the permanent director. There's always going to be need for the research that the NPU does. Um, I can't see that that's going to stop. Uh, I think there'll always be a need for it, uh, both here and internationally. Uh, and I am sure that the MPU will continue to grow and develop and new people will come in and um, I wish them all the very best for the next 40 years. Um, I'm sure I won't be around for the 80th uh, celebration but I'm delighted to be here for the 40th anniversary of the MPU. I'm Jenny Karinchuk and I'm Director of the National Perinatal Epidemiology Unit here at the University of Oxford. I joined the unit in 2003, becoming Director in 2011. I know you arrived in the unit 15 years ago, just as we were celebrating the 25th anniversary of the MPU. How did you come to join the unit? So I arrived uh, two days before the 25th anniversary celebrations, uh, which was a great way to start a new job. And I came to be in the unit, um, it's quite a long story. Uh, I trained in Leicester, I'd worked in Leicester, then went to Australia, was in Australia for seven years, uh, came back to the UK and um, I wasn't really looking to uh, move but saw the post advertised for the MPU and it was a great opportunity and I think I was probably ready at that stage for a, a new challenge and so I came down to the unit to see Peter and to meet the rest of the team and applied and was lucky to be successful to come and work in the um, MPU. You became director when Peter Brocklehurst left in 2011. 
How did that come about? When Peter decided to leave, made the decision in 2010 and, and left in 2011, I was uh, already Deputy Director, so I think I was the natural successor and I was lucky enough to be appointed. What do you think are the most important recent contributions made by the NPEU? I think we make a huge contribution um, to the research evidence base for mothers, babies and families, particularly in the UK, but a lot of our work is uh, translatable um, internationally. The quality of the trials that we conduct and the impact that they have on the care for mothers and babies has been uh, the evidence that we at the unit had generated that was in the National Maternity Review which was carried out recently and the consequent change that is happening now in terms of how maternity services are delivered. An enormous amount of our work uh, that we, we carried out specifically for the review but also um, existing research, particularly from the birthplace study, to enable a, an evidence-based change to policy and practice for the delivery of maternity services which I think it's a generational change in terms of the maternity transformation program which is underway at present. So I think the most important contributions have come from a, a range of studies that we've carried out both uh, the randomised control trials providing robust evidence upon which is changed thinking particularly of the TOBI trial of uh, total body cooling for babies who are born with disordered brain function. Uh, that's been uh, an enormous contribution. The, the trial that was run from here with external collaborators, extraordinary contribution and change in practice. Um, and the register that was established to monitor the change in practice, demonstrating that the results of the Toby trial were taken up very rapidly and there was a, a very rapid change in practice. That's been an, an enormous success. What have been the biggest successes since you became director? So where randomised control trials can't be carried out because the question isn't amenable to a, a trial, it's important that robust and rigorous observational evidence is produced and in the unit we carry out a range of studies and uh, successful examples of that I would think particularly of the birthplace study of the safety of place of birth. Also the national confidential inquiries and surveillance we carry out into maternal and perinatal deaths are absolutely pivotal in terms of providing uh, robust evidence for policy and practice in maternity and neonatal services. And the range of studies that we carry out for uncommon but uh, extremely important conditions uh, during pregnancy and for uh, newborn babies. Uh, I'm thinking here particularly of the UCOS studies and also the BAPSCAS studies and the recently established UK MID studies have provided evidence in areas where because the conditions that we study are relatively rare the evidence is very scarce but nevertheless there's an incredible burden of disease uh, cumulatively with the conditions that we look at in those areas so we've we've made an enormous contribution um, to our understanding of the rarer conditions of pregnancy. I think one of the key aspects to the success of the unit um, is really underpinned by the quality of staff working in the unit and that's a staff of all sorts. Everybody uh, makes a contribution to the work that we do. And another important key element to the success is the, uh, the collaborators that we work with. So we work with a range of people around the UK and around the world and if it weren't for the involvement of our collaborators it wouldn't be possible for us to produce the successful research that we do. Research is a, is a team activity, it isn't a solo pursuit and it's really important that you have the best people doing the best research uh, in the best environment and I think that's what we have uh, particularly when we involve collaborators who are experts in their field uh, from other institutions around the UK and around the world. Where do you see the MPU in 10 years time? So I think the MPU will continue to be the successful institution that it's been for the past 40 years. Research into maternal and child health I think will remain key, it will remain high on the research agenda. There are many, many questions that we still have to uh, resolve and I think uh, places like the MPU are key to answering the key research questions that we know about now but that will also emerge over the next 10 years. Um, I think we have a, a winning uh, team here at the MPU and 
I'm very confident that uh, in 10 years time that the unit will be in robust health. I don't anticipate being here by then, but my, my goal is to hand on to a, a future successful director. So I have every confidence that, that the MPU will continue to provide high quality evidence, which is important for policy and practice in the field of maternal and child health, ensuring that mothers, babies and families have a healthy future. So I'd like to take this opportunity and celebrating the 40th anniversary of the MPU to thank everybody who's worked in the MPU over the years and particularly thanking the current staff. It's uh, been a pleasure and a privilege to work uh, here in the unit, carrying out the research that we do, making a difference to the real lives of mothers, babies and families in the UK and beyond.